today we're going to run through valve springs, seat pressures, fitted lengths, etc, etc. And we're going to show you that via this little contraption we have here set up in the vise. We're going to wind the actual anvil down onto the pressure pad, just there. I'll turn it on first. And you will see then that that will bring us down to zero just here. And now we'll zero it. So zero. And we've got zero pressure on the pad. So what we're going to do now is we're going to wind the anvil up away from the pressure pad. We're going to pop the valve spring in and now wind it down to the fitted length that it would be fitted at in the cylinder head, like so. So that dimension now is 1.4. So we're going to wind this down to 1.4 now. Here we go, 1.4. And we have now the almost 80 pound seat pressure that we're looking for. So when that valve spring is fitted with the dimension between the bottom and the top of the valve spring at 1.4 inches, you will have a seat pressure of 79 pounds. Okay, now let's assume that's fitted on the cylinder head and you're going to run with a race cam and 1.5 rockers giving 500 valve lift. 500 thou off the 1.4 will give you a fitted length then of 0.9. So we'll now wind that up to 0.9 and that will then tell you what the pressure of the valve spring is at full valve lift. So we're going round now. There's 960. 9. 20, 70. There we go. So we're now up to 243 pound of pressure on the spring at full lift of 500 thou. So we're now going to check the valve spring seat depth from the rocker cover face. We're going to use this vernier depth gauge to check it. So firstly, we're going to pop him on there, push the plunger down and zero it. As you can see, we're on zero now. We're now going to move over so we're directly above the valve spring seat, push the plunger down and you will see now we're on 477. Right, we've gone all the way along here now and checked every depth and you'll see we've written them along the front of the cylinder head and we've got a variation from this one at 471 right up to this one at 483, which is 12 thou. So the valve spring is now at 0.9, which means it's got 500 thou of lift on it. And we're at 241 pound of pressure. 242, it's just flashed, one pound. Okay, so 242, remember. We're now gonna take 12 thou of lift off the spring and see how much it varies. So 242 at the moment and minus 12 thou. So we're now on 912 and we now drop down to 235. So we've lost seven pounds of pressure on the spring just with 12 thou variation. This was obviously a cylinder head straight off the rack. We have pulled some cylinder heads off the rack and seen a massive 60 thou variation on these spring seats. I'm not saying they're all as bad as 60 thou, but we have seen the worst 60 thou. Now, if we go back over to here and do a 60 thou variation, we're still on 900. We're still on the 242. So remember 242, and now we're gonna take 60 thou of lift off. Two forty-two, So we've lost 22 pound of pressure off the spring if that valve spring seat was 60 thou deeper, which it can be on some heads unless you rectify the problem. So one will ask the question, why is that so important? Because obviously if you've got a variation in spring pressure, you will have an uneven engine 
and you've got to optimize all of these things for the ultimate engine. This is a cylinder head that's finished, just ready for the springs to go on. So now we need to optimize the fitted length of the valve spring. And how we do this is, we've pre-made a little piece of steel. This is exactly one inch thick. So we pop that onto there. We pop a valve cap on. Two collets. Like so, pull the valve cap up, push the valve cap down onto the piece of steel and with a soft faced hammer just give it a tap to seal everything up and now that is where the valve spring will sit. We've already got a one inch piece of steel that we've just shown you so we know we need to be 1.4 so the gap here should be 0.4 so what we'll do is we'll just turn the caliper on, zero it there and now we'll measure the gap and you will see we are 0.3975 which is two and a half thou within what it should be which is pretty close this one we will just fit the springs on as they are because we know the gap is very close to 1.4 if the gap wasn't 1.4 let's say it was 1.440 it means the springs are going to be too loose. So what would you do then to tighten the springs up? The answer is spring seat spacers. We keep these in various thicknesses. If you need two millimeter, you put two ones in. So you must make sure that you get these valve springs shimmed up to the right dimension and an even dimension all the way along the head. Okay, we've now shown you how to fit the valve springs at the correct fitted length, but one's got to ask, how do we rectify the problem of the incorrect height of the valve springs? And this is the answer. This is a milling cutter that we put in the milling machine. And what it does is the pilot actually fits into the hole where the valve guide fits. And then we machine all the valve spring seats to the correct height so you then don't have this problem to start with so you've got all the valves cut into the right height which then means all of the valve spring seat heights will be the same relative to the first one that you've checked and you might see that they've all actually been cut okay so that will then be sure that the valve spring seats are correct we know the valve spring fitted length is going to be correct, but this is all then relative to whether the valve seats have been cut correctly. Because if the valve spring seats haven't been cut correctly, you could end up with the valves being absolutely ridiculous. They could be like that. So you must have all the valve seats cut as we checked for the spring seats from this side, you must do the same from this side to the head of the valve to make sure these are all within a very fine tolerance. We normally cut the valve seats to within a couple of thou. So if you've got that side within two thou, you've got this side cut with the milling cutter within two thou, then all of your valve caps are always going to be within three or four thou which then means your spring um, fitted lengths are all going to be exactly the same. So there's the overview on the valve spring fitting and all the checking that you have to do. Obviously, get any questions, don't hesitate, give us a call, drop us an email, we'll be glad to help. <laughs>